Welcome. This is what has been happening on the Sun today, the 18th of April 2011. Let's first take a look at the sunspot regions. We have 1190 approaching the west limb and seems to be decaying somewhat. 1193 seems to still be growing. 1191 is fairly stable. And that's it for numbered regions today. However, a small spot group has developed just to the south and east of 1193. And there's yet another small spot group coming over the northeast limb at the moment. So both of those regions should be numbered fairly soon. The region that we've seen coming over the southeast limb the last couple of days um, doesn't seem to have any spots associated with it, so probably won't get numbered. Looking at the x-ray data, in the last 24 hours we've just had four sea flares. Interestingly, some of those have been tagged to region 1185, which is over the west limb at the moment. If you look at the stereo A data, you'll be able to see those flares actually occurring. Next we turn to the Solar Dynamics Observatory data to see what's happening on the side of the Sun that is facing the Earth. In the white light and magnetic movies, you can see the slow decay of region 1190 and the slight growth in region 1193. In the magnetic movie, look at the development of these three small bipolar regions. Many such regions appear and disappear. Only a small fraction of them actually ever develop spots, but only a fraction of those become major sunspot regions. But if a new region is going to develop, this is how they first appear. So it's worth keeping an eye on these over the next few days. In the Helium 304 image, there are two things you need to look at. First in the southwest, the filament that I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, lifting off, actually lifted off. So I feel quite vindicated about that. Also in the northeast, there's another violent eruption. In the Corona movie, our interest remains those regions coming over the east limb, which now can clearly be seen. The stereo B data shows there's not very much activity going on in the regions that are about to come onto the disk over the next week. From our composite coronal image, we see that we're continuing to lose regions over the west limb and we have at least a day or two before any more new regions come over the east limb. So things will remain relatively quiet for a day or two. Now let's see how the CMEs are doing. In the last 24 hours it looks as though we've had at least four. First you can see the CMEs in the inner corona in the C2 movie, followed by the uh, larger field of view C3 movie. Over the last couple of days we've had rather patchy data from the chronographs. So I've put this 48 hour movie together showing all the events in the middle of the picture you can see this, the little tiny sun which is the helium 304 image. The red area is the Lasco C2 image and the blue area around it is the Lasco C3 image. Now let's see how many coronal mass ejections you can count in this last 48 hours. Moving on to geospace, the auroral zone seems a little more active than yesterday and the KPE index has been varying between 0 and 3. So in summary, as predicted the sunspot number has dropped further to 67, the x-ray background has remained constant at about B4, the radio sun is a little more quiet at 114 solar flux units, solar wind speed has freshened slightly to just over 380 km per second and the KPE index remains quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours, I think the chance of getting C flares remains likely, but a rather relatively low chance of getting M flares and a very low chance of getting X flares. We continue to get coronal mass ejection, so I see no reason why that should not continue, but the chances of getting a geomagnetic storm are relatively low. That's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.